40 years ago to this exact week, believe it or not, I bought one of these from Donington Motorcycles in the UK, obviously next to Donington Racetrack. Now this bike reinvented everything that Suzuki was on about. It immediately won production racing, dominated drag racing, massive four-cylinder engine. Do you know what I'm talking about yet? Let me give you this. Yes, there it is, the famous GSX badge, Suzuki's most famous badge of all. Used to be a GS and then the first time the X was added. Unless you come from America, which they call a GS 1100, but then again, they do emit a lot of vowels, so we'll pass on that. But the GSX was quite innovative in many areas, many areas, which I'm just going to run through very briefly. So let's just lean back here. It was the first bike with, so Suzuki say, with fully adjustable suspension. I.e. at the back, there is a shock absorber with damping at the top. Not sure what the damping does. And more importantly, the first ever production motorcycle with an aluminium box section swing arm or aluminum if it's a GS 1100. Moving slightly forward, TSCC, first time it appeared, which means, come on, yes, twin swirl combustion chambers. Now, if you don't know what that means, put four knuckles together like that and push it into plasticine, there you have a TSCC head. But the most interesting feature is up here, the front forks at the bottom, never been seen before, damping. I don't even know what it does really, but it damps something. And at the middle bit here, air adjustable suspension and spring preload. So there we go. Infinitely adjustable front suspension. So behind this iconic square headlight is Suzuki's check panel, which they say was the first of its kind. And all it really does is check if the bulbs are blown. Anyway, beside that, does it ride like a piece of rubbish or 40 years on, is it still a very nice motorcycle to ride? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get back on it and ride it hard and answer. Right, we're out on the bike now. Let's give it some beans and see what this iconic engine is all about. Wow. Instantly. It is so smooth. This motor with a beautiful five-speed gearbox, it just sneaks through and the roll on power. I know for a fact that Suzuki made 100 horsepower and this bike makes 100 horsepower at the wheel. Combine that with a very short ratio gearbox and you have a bike that can rip quarter miles 40 years ago. 7.4 seconds and the handling well for a 40 year old bike this, this suspension is fantastic brakes well single piston caliper what do you expect it was not bad actually another thing i must say about this bike what has happened to the comfort don't forget this was cutting edge so what has happened to comfort massive fat seat for you and your missus Rubber mounted footrest. No wonder you can go touring, racing. This can be ridden every day, everywhere. And being a Suzuki vehicle thing will never, ever, ever break down. Truly remarkable. Whew. South African summers, 30 degrees temperature, and an air cooled engine is very, very hot. But perfect motor. 40 years on absolutely impressive the way this thing runs and why is it still going 40 years on i'll tell you why things like roller bearing crankshaft and a massive 630 chain nothing you see on big cc motorbikes of today now this is a 1979 gsx let me just mention this and it is not restored because some people go obsessive with the nut and bolt restoration now what that does is basically third the value because this is basically worth the same as a modern gsx are today if you can find one. So, 40 years old, and I would imagine that this will still be going 
in another 40 years. Unlike myself, because I probably won't be around then. So, sad times, I'm going to have to leave it alone, and I would love to win one. Oh, one more thing. There you go, mate. You deserve it. Pains me to say it, but um, it's a really, really, really nice thing. The motor is incredibly smooth. The gearbox is better than any new gearbox I've tested for about <laughs> Jeez, 15 baby. years. Yeah. Um, and despite it always, in my memory, it's a monster of a bike. And yet you get on it now and it's really nimble and easy to use and... Tiny. Feels light almost. It's it is 250 kilos dry that thing. <laughs> That's mm. a fair amount, isn't it? I mean, it's not bad. Well, it's is not it? bad but when you think of all it. the yeah. That's a GS these it's days. It's the dimensions isn't it? of it though, because you get on something like that RT, which is like an art royal battleship. Yeah. That thing is tiny, and when when I first saw it 40 years ago, you couldn't believe the size of it. When you walk up to it, it's like, what is this? And the, can bikes the, get any The bigger? brakes are. Um, well, sing one <laughs> piston caliper with a claw, don't forget. Yes, and it's... a tiny little 290 We, we talk these days of one finger braking and two finger braking. That's whole, whole hand and then both feet on the... <laughs> and then a quick prayer. The back brake like is... The, a, don't you think the back brake's amazing, though? Well, only after you told me it needs a double pump to work. <laughs> uh, OK, listen, how much does that kind of authentic retro i mean we got the re the new retro with the guzzy earlier in the program yeah authentically what's that worth uh it, obviously it goes up in value every year yeah that's so it thing. is an investment yeah without a doubt but to find one that's unrestored i'd say same sort of value as a new gs6r thousands and probably so going up. two to 250 somewhere in there 200 150 200 depending who wants to reel in if you want it okay you have classic bikes it tends to be for classic blokes you know they're not getting away from it it's older blokes like classic you why do you like that it comes from your from the it's a history of your motorcycling isn't because it, basically? i had one 40 years ago yeah exactly uh tell so anyway look it's for older blokes yes and older blokes get pleasure out of their classic bikes in a way that we youngsters don't because go on tell us I about see your little these. manuals well first of all that thing came out in 1980 it arrived here i think 70 well 79 that one is yes. the very very first one and then immediately it won production racing here, and I found this old thing. <laughs> I do recognise him. And then on the back is Dave Peterson winning the first time out on production racing. Now, Donovan, yeah. what happened <clears throat> to production racing? Because it is the biggest cheating sport it that is. ever it came is. into motorcycles. I'll tell you what, especially nowadays with electronics, you can't actually monitor it no i mean you have no idea what's going on inside that thing it's not like you pull out a vernier and just kind of check you can't so there's no you can't do production racing anymore not proper production racing so anyway. not Dave to say Peterson, they didn't cheat at all Dave Peterson production racing on a shell just like racing one of those things exactly unbelievable and uh, uh stock uh, <laughs> south africa's last moto gp racer before brad binder the only man that's actually ridden a factory south african factory nsr 500 there you go you know another one okay so the Ooh. manual itself i presume this is probably worth something is this an original manual yes yeah, probably worth about five grand that or five thousand <laughs> sa rand in that condition <laughs> but inside some of these oh, i know there nice you go. riding diagrams i mean marquez will love this because he obviously he obviously <laughs> got wrong. one of these yes and there's Donovan, <laughs> and there's you. So that was me because I was riding like that earlier, if you notice. Yeah, right. I, I learned. Have you also I, noticed the old blokes are into classic bikes and manuals live a fantasy life, almost yes, totally, totally devoid of any reality. I'm, 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 sorry, I'm a big at fan. Of, I'm a big fan of this one. Yes. He's saying no blokes with beards. That's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> See, you can wear clothes, but anyone with a beard, you don't even need a bike underneath you, look, because you're sitting. It's on like thank here. you, Suzuki. I appreciate this. What are you saying? <laughs> but highly, I mean, the manual is hilarious. And apparently, one picture in here, that if you use the brakes too hard, you will go over the bars. Really? <laughs> really? Well, with tiny discs and 250 Before kilos. Before you wash the front or bend the forks no, or... No, way. Well, you won't, will Or you? hit Here what you're it? trying to avoid. Oh, look, yes. you can even describe your internal brain and the levels of house it has. Anyway. So they're saying yeah, no well, beards. Anyway, they're basically thanks. saying no beards and all Suzuki riders are stupid. 
This uh, <laughs> conversation hasn't been quite as enlightening for you, the viewer, as I was anticipating. No. <laughs> so uh, leave us to the rest of our lunch. Come back in a couple of minutes and we'll be t talking to uh, someone who well, makes a lot more sense than we do.